everybody. Welcome back to the Arts at EPCC. My name is Dr. Yasmine Flores. And today we have Mr. Marco Sanchez from the Art Department. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Marco Sanchez. How Hi. are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank awesome. <laughs> I am so thrilled to have you on the show. Let me explain the buildup to having Mr. Marco Sanchez. <laughs> Frank Rimbach was on the show um, mm -hmm. a few weeks back. And he kept going on and on. You've got to have Marco on the show. You've got to have Marco on the show. No, stop what you're doing. You got to have Marco <laughs> Sanchez on the show. And I said, fine, I will get Marco Sanchez. Yeah, he's too and kind. So, and it, uh, you're a busy guy. And you were teaching the Tuesday, Thursday class. You teach it. And so, um, and you had meetings. You had, well, anyway. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for making time for us. Yeah, no, my pleasure. And bringing these beautiful pieces of art with you today. I'm very curious about this one over here on this block of wood. Now this, mm -hmm. talk to me, first of all, where, where does one begin? You are from El Paso, Texas? Um, no, what is, but I mean, okay. I've, I've been in El Paso since I was 11, so. Okay, kind of, yeah, sort of. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And you started at EPCC when? I did in 2002. Wow. Well, as a student, 2002. Okay. Yes. And as uh, part-time? Part-time, just last year, fall 2021. Okay, as awesome. Adjunct, yeah. And, and the buzz around you started the minute you joined us. Did it really? Yes. No clue. It was, yeah, everybody wanted your prints. Everybody wanted, I had, I had some of my <laughs> colleagues that were like, oh, I'm going to go and buy a print. Are you going to buy a print? And I'm like, what print? What are we talking? What's happening right <laughs> now? <laughs> right? And so, um, and then this year you became full-time. Yes, I'm, uh, I was um, hired as a lecturer with uh, a mission campus is my uh -huh. position, but I am, uh, my studio classes are at Valle Verde still, so. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. And so how long have you been painting, Marco? Uh, painting? Uh, painting, sorry, or doing artwork. Well, okay, so roughly, I wanna say 2010 is when I started at UTEP, mm -hmm. uh, but seriously more so in uh, 2013 is okay. when I finally, decided, okay, gotta and, get serious and focus. Yeah, and so, and your specialty, because I, when I say painting, mm -hmm. understand this at home, and everyone already knows what my profession is. So, do you know what my profession is? Yeah, musician. What do I play? I bet you he doesn't know. Violin? No. No? No, you I mean you're a singer, your voice outside of piano? I'm a clarinetist. Clarinetist. But that is Dang. okay that you don't know that. My right. point being that I know so little about art. <laughs> so when I yeah. say painting, I mean artwork. I'm, I apologize. Yeah. And no, there's so many different types. Right, absolutely. And I do paint. My, my undergrad was in, it's a double concentration, a BFA in painting and in printmaking. I started actually as a painting and anthropology major. Mm -hmm. And I was in my second to last painting course and in my third anthro course when I took print. Mm -hmm. and just the processes of every single methodology that's involved in printmaking is just kind of what seduced me and I still paint but not as much as you know as I should or as I would like to okay mm -hmm. awesome and and so you don't teach the painting courses no I do not okay Correct. okay mm -hmm. you teach so talk to me more about print so yeah I teach life drawing one life drawing and printmaking uh -huh. um, Print, my master's is in printmaking. Okay. Um, what is print to the novice out there? So printmaking is just a way to duplicate or to make multiples. Uh, we call them editions to make an edition of any art piece or any text. Like the Bible was the first printed uh, textbook en masse. Um, awesome. And that was printed by a letterpress mm -hmm. where typography, every letter is set mm -hmm. individually. Um, so print is, in essence, just a way to make multiples. And they're all original, they're all hand-pulled, they're all made by the same person or group of people, but mm -hmm. um, there's no copies, um, they're all originals. Like many people think like, oh, like do you have copies of those? Or like a copy, and it's like, no, they're not copies. Copies would be 
if you have a painting or a drawing and then you send it through a Xerox. Right. You know, so that there's a big, big difference from when something says print mm -hmm. or, you know, when people call them prints and they're really printed by a digital printer, they should be called posters, I think. There's, oh, there's I a big, see. big difference. Wow, mm -hmm. that's awesome. And so, you know, what fascinates me because you, you hit something that I'm remembering from the Donald J. Grout history of Western music, mm -hmm. which every musician has on their shelf, tucked away, <laughs> holding a door open. Um, <laughs> but um, that it's around what was it 1501 i believe was the first printing press mm -hmm. and so for musicians <clears throat> how it relates to us is that some of the old music dating back to the 1700s 1800s mm -hmm. when it was first published they had plates yep. and and you can kind of explain this concept of the plate because i i roughly understand it but basically was it that was it that the plate was engraved Correct. with everything and then they would dip it in ink no, you don't dip. If you were to dip, I mean, it's going to be sopping wet. Oh, you're so, right. Okay. Yeah, we have you have rollers, so oh. you have rollers. Oh. Um, okay. Yeah. The, the, there's different types of machines that do different types of printing. Mm -hmm. um, like those would be letterpress, which uh -huh. there's many different types. The first ones. Um, now we have Vandercook, we have CMPs, um, but the first one were Gutenberg, a Gutenberg press, and mm -hmm. that's how all these pieces were made they were made in uh, metal like uh -huh. some sort of steel yeah and that would be engraved with acids different types of acids we have hydrochloric ferric chloride um, Dutch mortar baths just um, depends on the the type of metal that you're using then you kind of use a different variation of the acids in order to to okay. get that engraved interesting because um, mm -hmm. it still has the plate number Correct. Um, is so like on our sheet music, mm -hmm. all of our old sheet music, mm -hmm. which you can find on imslp.org, which is TMI, but for those musicians out there, um, at the very bottom, you'll see the year in Roman numerals, mm -hmm. and you see the little plate number off to the mm -hmm. side. So that fascinates me. Mm -hmm. So now let's finally get back to this thing. Sure. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. And, I, and I'm sorry, I am a little all over the map. No, that is okay. my personality. Sure, sure. I see Marco in the hallways sparingly he's running i'm running we both have our hair on fire <laughs> right <laughs> right yes exactly and so so we we catch each other this is the first time that we've really sat down mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and talked and so is that you yes that is ah, me. that is me. i love it what is this board what is this piece of wood <sighs> so this piece itself is compiled from images from different blocks, from different matrices. When we make a print, um, the material that we're using is called a matrix. Okay. So this right here is a matrix. It's a linoleum block mm -hmm. and that would be called a matrix. This is made by multiples. Uh, you see the fence and you see myself. Mm -hmm. Those two are part of a smaller print um, and they're different methodologies. This is a relief print carved on wood and then this is an etching. Uh, on a, from a copper plate that I also shaped with a jeweler saw to the shape that you see here. Um, so that compiles to make one original image. Um, mm -hmm. And then the hummingbirds are from, from another block, from a linoleum block, <clears throat> from I another see. matrix. So I made this this way because this piece itself is going to a traveling exhibition that's going to mm -hmm. be traveling to various uh, Mexican consulates throughout the U.S. Okay. It's starting, I believe, in San Bernardino, California. Wow. That I have to, like, package and ship after this, actually. Right. Um, but it's kind of open for interpretation. Um, yeah. My work many times can be open for interpretation, as all artwork should be, uh -huh. is, and should be subjective. Yeah. Um, but I made this piece during grad school where most of my work was very reaction. I was reaction, reacting to the political climate, which was from t 2016 to 2020. Mm -hmm. And I was in grad school from 2017 to 2020. So um, I went to the university, Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania, now, mm -hmm. no, now known as Penn West Edinburgh. Okay. Um, so I was in the middle of Northwestern Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. rural, very rural America. Right. Um, part of the snow belt mm -hmm. and I decided to go to 
kind of the furthest place I would accept me because I had an idea in mind that, you know, the rhetoric that we were listening through from, you know, the political leaders of that time, um, I wanted to kind of demonstrate that that rhetoric was, came from a place of ignorance and that it wasn't valid, that, you know, and it wasn't just towards like Mexicans, it was immigrants, it was people of color, it was people of the LGBT community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of my work was pretty reactionary okay. to that rhetoric. And this piece itself also was also influenced by a book titled, um, by a book titled Land of Open Graves by anthropologist and archeologist Jason De Leon, who documents, he wrote the book Land of Open Graves by, what he wanted to do is document uh, scientifically undocumented migration because it's, oh, okay. it hadn't ever really been done in that mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. um, it had been more like statistics and collecting data like numbers, but never really the more human aspect of. Right. And so I was reading through that book and it was it's pretty heart wrenching and it's about, mm. you know, documenting the pilgrimage that undocumented migrants take specifically through like the Sonoran Desert and, and, right. and mm -hmm. like horrible temperatures and, and conditions. So you hear a lot about the stuff that the migrants leave behind, like sometimes shoes, backpacks, uh, water bottles, wallets, rosaries, like what have you. So wow. this piece in essence came from, from reading that book and that, mm -hmm. you know, that rhetoric that, yeah. that was being sort of spewed out for those years. Right, right. And, and so it's, it's, you know, and, and I hadn't stopped to really think about it. I was literally just kind of seeing it as three random things. Mm -hmm. I was singing, the, seeing the fence, the person in midair, mm -hmm. and the birds. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. making, I wasn't connecting the dots. Yeah. And so, yeah, and the mountain range back there, mm -hmm. that's beautiful too. Um, and so that's really interesting. And I mean, so art, um, I guess, and, and this is a 30 minute show. This sure, could sure. easily be a five hour show yes. <laughs> because, <laughs> because I, have, I have a million questions. Sure. So I'm, I'm just gonna jump to the next piece of sure. artwork because you, you have so many pieces with you today. Mm -hmm. How does this thing start out? This is on literally just black linoleum. No, it's gray. So the color that you see is the color, original color than the linoleum. Right okay. now it, it's black because I've pulled prints from it. So that's oh. that's saying that remains. Oh, uh -huh. so so when you say you've pulled a print, so you've added ink. Yeah, so it's they're essentially stamps, right? I mean, when you have okay. something on linoleum, you're just essentially making like larger, more elaborate stamps, okay. or the stamps that you wish to put with your own mm -hmm. ideas and concepts behind it. So okay, mm -hmm. and this is carved with what? They're carved with, I did not bring any of my tools. Uh, there's okay. very specific gouges for printmaking and okay. we have different V gouges, U gouges, uh -huh. um, straight chisels, and it just depends on the type of mark that you're trying to make. Okay, mm -hmm. how long does it take you to create something like this? It depends. Um, I have a block here that I carved in two days that wow. I needed to send to, to a conference in Akron. Uh, mm -hmm. But then conversely, I have blocks of the same size that take me a bit over a year. It just yeah. depends on how invested I am in it, how excited I am about the piece. Mm -hmm. um, if it needs to go to a show anywhere or um, it just depends. But mm -hmm. this piece, I think I carved, I, I drew it out first on paper, transfer it kind of via carbon, carbon mm -hmm. paper, and mm -hmm. then carve it after that. and. I think the entire process from drawing to carving to pulling the first print might have taken me about 10 days. Wow, that's incredible. That is, and it's so beautiful. Tell me what I'm looking at. Obviously, this is a pair of feet uh -huh. uh, over a fire. All right. Uh, I don't know if they're chained. I think this yeah. might be a chain. Yes, they are. Okay. This is uh, possibly like, I don't know if it's a Native American headdress or if that's supposed to be light behind a building. It is a headdress, it's a penacho, it's Moctezuma's penacho, which Moctezuma oh. was, you know, a Mexica emperor. Uh-huh, uh -huh. okay, very good. And then we have a gentleman with a book, with um, kind of those early, kind of mid 1980s sweaters uh -huh. that, were <laughs> that were popular back in the day. Absolutely. Uh, some dress shoes, I think. Yeah. 
And then I cannot figure out what this is. That is the Macuahuitl, which is the obsidian sword from the Teotihuacanos and Mexican people as oh. well. Oh, uh -huh. okay. With, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's got, it has like a little dragon, and not right? A, not a dragon. It's the feathered serpent, Quetzalcoatl. So, okay. you know, some of the deities of, of oh. Mexican people. Yeah. So the piece itself is... Um, I was invited by the Mexican government, by mm -hmm. uh, foreign ministry and culture department uh -huh. from Me Mexico. They invited 40 Mexican, Mexican-American or Chico, 40 Mexican artists living and working in the U.S. Mm -hmm. to a conference in Mexico City last year. And yeah. I was looking at a painting of uh, Hernán Cortés burning uh, Cuauhtémoc's feet. Oh, I see. Which is, you know, something that, that happened. And, and uh -huh. here came uh, Mr. Santaella uh -huh. and asked me if I knew the story about about the painting. So I said yes. And oh. he asked me to tell it to him. And I told it to him and mm -hmm. or what I knew. And mm -hmm. he tells me, he's like, yeah, that's about 70%. And he just proceeds to tell me more oh, uh, how about more facts, more about the story that I was unaware of. And yeah. so then outside of that, the Penacho... Um, of Moctezuma's Penacho Moctezuma's headdress mm -hmm. that's found at the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City as well but that Penacho that, that is there is mm -hmm. not the original Penacho that's a replica oh, the I real see. one right now it, it's in Europe and it's in Al Albania I believe at the moment I think I don't know if they own it or if like London Britain mm -hmm. owns it mm -hmm. um, so after having a conversation with Mr. Santaella mm -hmm. um you know, it's like you got to thinking like, well, who are the the keepers of our culture? Who continues our traditions and our oral histories and, right. and the knowledge outside of also like academic institutions? It's like mm -hmm. the general populace also has it. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, how histories were passed along, right? Like oral history. Right. Um, and that's why I included, you know, the, the feet, which mm -hmm. are pretty much directly t taken from from that painting. Mm hmm. Uh, of course, the Macahuitl being being the the weapon that Mexicas and Teotihuacanos and various other groups of people in Mesoamerican cultures used. Mm -hmm. The Penacho and, and Mr. Santaella and the piece is titled um, Conservador de Nuestra Cultura, so like keeper of our culture. So. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's and you're and you're absolutely right. And I could. It's a whole nother episode to delve into the question about museums mm -hmm. and, and taking artwork. Oh, yeah. That's the big buzz right, right now, right? right? Um, because, and it is fascinating. And I know that some places are in the process of giving things back yep. um, to some of these countries that mm -hmm. were technically, where they stole. Right, <laughs> right, I mean, right. essentially they stole items from them. Yep. So that is so, and you know, I've never... I'm obviously born and raised here. Mm -hmm. I've never traveled much deep. I have not traveled deep into Mexico. Mm. I've only seen pictures of it mm. and, and everything. And it is beautiful. Yeah. It is. And it's such a, such a rich culture. Right. Um, one that's mine. Right. <laughs> I, I think it's funny because, you know, and, and I, I'm trying to stay on topic because you, right. I can easily veer off, but it's, it's so funny what the border represents to yeah. us, isn't it? Uh, a silly little fence. Yeah. And and yet, we're essentially all the same people, just yeah. uh, uh, you know, on either side of it. Right. And so it's um, it, I, I find it fascinating. So I am. This is beautiful. This is absolutely stunning. Now you have other yes. items. Yes. I will let you pull from your pile. Sure. Please understand to those people at home, Marco was very particular about what everything <laughs> was beautiful yeah. in that uh, portfolio that you had and was stunning. Do you want me to stack it here? How would you um, like me to? Sure. Yeah, I wasn't sure okay. how we were going to do it. I will but, play Vanna White. Yeah. So this piece is uh, the piece where oh, where the hummingbirds okay. came from. Sure, we can do, just, okay, just, we stack, can just it. stack that sure. one and then we can just trade that one out. So that's where the hummingbirds came from, and mm -hmm. that's a piece of my mother. Um, she loves hummingbirds. Um, oh, beautiful. Watering her garden. She mm -hmm. loves, um, what is this flower called? Is that an orchid? No, it's um, the Jamaica, hibiscus. Oh, hibiscus. hibiscus okay, yeah. that's right. And well, my mom had six kids. There were six of us, so uh -huh. you know, there's six hummingbirds. <gasps> How cute. Mm -hmm. And um, 
So yeah, just a piece for mm -hmm. my mother. Like I'd been doing a lot of pieces of my father, um, who's a contractor, general contractor, and that's work that I've done many times for years. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, that also kind of became important. Mm -hmm. um, and with the, with the pandemic and thinking like who is essential and um, so again, it came very easy to make those prints. Right. Um, but yeah, that's what this is. And um, again, it's the hummingbirds that you see on this piece on the on the right. Oh, um, but also yes, thinking it is. when I, I included them on this piece because they're also migrant beings, right? So. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, and so much can be interpreted in that. Yeah. You know, and as you're as you're showing me, it was the more we talk about it, you know, the birds are free mm -hmm. to travel. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so you can find so many things right, in that. I love her blouse too. I love, I love that you incorporated the hibiscus in, mm -hmm. in her blouse. And I found the other bird. It's right uh -huh. here, yes. just for those people at hidden. home. Because uh -huh. I was counting them, and I was like, I don't think so, Marco. Yeah. I think you miscounted. You know, <laughs> yeah. so it's one right here, two, three, four, five, and then sixth Correct. one is down Which here. Is yeah, it's not yeah. on here. But, okay, yeah. okay, um, beautiful. So yeah, that's sad piece. And then I think yeah, that might be I, I'll have to remove. Sure, Let me please. be very gentle. There we go. Okay. We might have to remove both just because this okay, one's smaller. Okay, sure. Yes. And I'm going to be very gentle with your things. Sure. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, yes, of course. There you go. And you could set that here. That's okay, fine. sure. Yeah, people don't mind it being there. Okay, awesome. Um, do you want to lend a hand? Yes, of course. Yeah. So this piece I carved in two days. Printed, printed awesome. it, framed it, and sent it out in like four days. So they all, you know, take different times. Yeah. And this piece, I was invited to be part of a, a show in a, at a printmaking conference mm -hmm. called MAPSI, Mid American Print Council. Mm -hmm. And the show was about, in essence, about resistance. It was titled Mark of Empowerment. And mm -hmm. I was actually going to back out of this exhibition, just having a lot on my plate. And mm -hmm. um, the curator, who's a friend of mine, told me, say, hey, like, you know, are you still in it? And I was typing like, sorry, I have to back out. And right. I saw him typing. So I finished my, my, my message and I waited and to see what he had to say. And, mm -hmm. and then he tells me like, hey, like Enrique Chagoya and the Guerrilla Girls, mm -hmm. who if you don't know who they are, um, I mean, we teach about them in art history and in art appreciation okay. and they're like big, big names. So once he told me, it's like, these people are in it. I'm like, okay, I fine. I'll have to make a piece. And and in essence, it's just from un, from photographs, and of course the the yucca mm -hmm. uh, stem with the yucca pods, a cotillo with the cotillo flowers, and yeah, um, a little type of corazón sagrado, sacred heart, and mm -hmm. the speech bubbles are sort of to emulate the the speech bubbles from uh, codices from Mexica or Aztec codices, which oh. none of those were made by the Mexicas; they were all made by by Spanish. Okay. specifically uh, by priests. Okay, right, mm -hmm. wow, this is, I mean, they're stunning. And so that is the piece, that's yeah. the block, that's the matrix, but uh -huh. I can, we can also show you what the print looks like. Oh! So if you wanna see them compared side by side. That's beautiful, yeah. And I don't know, that's there's really a bunch nice. of different colors of paper, but um, I yeah. just personally, for this type of image, I think this uh -huh. paper being brown and, and my idea was like brownness and same thing, like yeah. pay tribute to like, to our heritage and, and to those, um, you know, blue collar workers. Mm -hmm. So the brown, the brown paper, the, it's called craft. The color of the paper is called craft. So I just figured okay. this paper works nicely for this image. Yeah. And it's so funny because I kept wondering about the carving, mm -hmm. right? The digging into the, and right. I was like, it looks very rough, but then on the print, you don't even see yeah. it. So no. it, it doesn't matter. That's right. interesting. Awesome. Well, I don't want to, sure, yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't want to keep you there holding that no, all day. Right. Um, yeah. We can show you maybe yeah, you this go. one, and then we can, we can leave that one on top. Okay, sure. And this is a piece I'm working on for. Oh, um, that's beautiful. I love the little accordion. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my goodness. So, and so you're still in, this is in progress. Correct. Yeah, it's a work in progress. Absolutely. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I have maybe about eight. If I were to sit down and just do nothing else, I have mm -hmm. maybe eight hours left of carving. A bit on the molcajete, on the. Uh huh. Uh, yes. Mortar and pestle. Yeah. 
Uh, Corazón Sagrado that I also need to finish inking before mm -hmm. I start carving. Right. Um, we have a couple of the animals that are in codices that I still need to carve. Mm -hmm. That's a jaguar. This is an eagle. I need a Quetzalcoatl and then... Um, oh, they're drawn up there. Yeah. Oh, I see it. But yeah, this yeah. one's for a project that I have, or, that I organized, titled Nexo Entre Raices, or Nexus Between Roots. Mm -hmm. And it's 17 Mexican artists, well, from Mexico, mm -hmm. 17 Mexican identifying, so Mexican, Mexican-American, or Chicano, mm -hmm. living and working in the U.S. And we all sort of have our interpretation of like what that like nexus between roots okay um you know what we take from our li familial lineage or from our ancestral lineage so it could mm -hmm. be directly like to our parents or grandparents great-grandparents or I, I have friends that are part of it that are zapotecos zapotecs um, are indigenous people from oaxaca from like pre-aztec times mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. the, some of the groups that formed teotihuacan mm -hmm or that were part of Teotihuacan, mm -hmm. and he's Zapoteco, he has Zapotecan lineage, and he's doing his work that dates, you know, pre predates to the indigenous roots, so. Wow. And it's just how everybody sort of takes it. So it's not about migration, most people think it's about migration, but no, it's like how, how we carry traditions mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. us. You know? Absolutely. Marco, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Um, I don't know. I, I would love to, I have, few presses myself I would love to open my own print shop because we mm -hmm. don't El Paso doesn't have a printmaking shop mm -hmm. that is readily available to the public at all times right so I would love to at some point do that because to me it's insane that a, a place like the border like Del Paso Juarez and Las Cruces region doesn't have one wow you know we're a bit over two million people I believe yeah yeah, um, exactly. And you go to places like Silver City mm -hmm. or Marfa and other small places, and they have, you know, community shops. Wow. So to me, it's insane that we don't have that. So I'd like to, at some point, open that. Mm -hmm. um, Ten years sounds like a stretch, but I also do want to continue teaching. Yeah. So I hope still teaching, but then have, have been making progress into opening the shop. Mm -hmm. and having either assistants or employees and, and sure so i need to i have some ideas and to how to make it work but yeah I'm still doing a bit of both and still hopefully traveling and well we want yeah. you to stay on board mm -hmm. for the next 10 years yeah. or more right. possibly and so marco i'd like to thank you there is so much artwork yeah. here can the folks contact you um, at your email if they're absolutely. interested in any of these as yes, prints? Yes, ab absolutely. Uh, tell them your email. My school email? Yes, your school. My school email? Okay, mm -hmm. absolutely, right? Yeah. My school email is msanc316 at epcc.edu. Awesome, mm -hmm. very good. We'll have his email at the bottom of the screen, yes. folks, so that you can contact Mr. Sanchez mm -hmm. about any of these prints if you are interested in purchasing them yeah, or, or also just learning about the classes that you offer. Yeah. And uh, don't forget to sign up for spring 2023. Registration Please. is now open. You Please. can take a class with Mr. Sanchez. Yeah. Marco, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, it, Dr. Yeah, absolutely. Lotus. Of course. All yeah. right. Well, thank you, everybody. We will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Take care.